Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States Air Force has some of the planet's most advanced aircraft and weapon systems. However, few people know that the workforce of this airborne fleet is more than 70 years old. Introduced in 1955, the B-52 Stratofortress has long served as a proud symbol of American air power. Even today, the long-range strategic bomber remains integral to the country's emergency aerial response strategy. first thing about the B-52 is just the historical presence that it carries with it. I think when the enemy sees the B-52 fly overhead, it, it strikes fear into their hearts. Uh, and that's something that we absolutely want to take advantage of. The B-52 can carry up to 70,000 pounds of ordnance. Often this includes bombs, mines, and missiles. Modifications allowed the aircraft to carry air-launched cruise missiles, Harpoon anti-ship missiles, and HAVNAP missiles. Despite the sheer number of weapons on board, the crew consists of only five people. Based in Minot, North Dakota, the B-52 maintenance hangar has the capacity to house two B-52 Stratofortress aircraft at a time. Right. Table test, south test, good. Since 1989, modifications to the B-52's global positioning system have been ongoing, including heavy store adapter beams and advanced weaponry. The aircraft requires an entire team to perform inspections and routine repairs, which is essential when maintaining the aircraft's lifespan. We are repairing systems that are key to this aircraft being able to fly. We are doing in-depth maintenance. You can see over my shoulder they're working on panels. We're lubing key components. We're replacing key components. We're doing inspections on key areas, high-stress areas of the aircraft. Every month, one B-52 is taken apart in the phase hangar, inspected, and put back together again. This typically takes 14 days to complete. With a 159-foot long fuselage and a 185-foot wingspan, washing a B-52 is not easy. If the aircraft is out on the flight line, it is cleaned every 120 days, however, the in-depth cleaning is conducted during phase maintenance. During the phase wash, all the panels and compartments are removed to ensure each part of the aircraft is thoroughly cleaned. The soap used in this process is potent, hence the cleaners must wear special suits and protective gear. The main purpose of phase wash is to prevent corrosion, which can drastically impact the structural integrity of the metal. Sometimes the B-52 structure gets damaged during a flight or on the runway. In such scenarios, the Aircraft Structural Maintenance Squadron is responsible for maintaining the B-52 these airmen take care of the aerodynamics and other substructures of the aircraft. We do the structures of the aircraft. The best way to explain it is auto body for airplanes. 
skin of the aircraft substructure like ribs and stuff when they crack. We also deal with corrosion on the jet and we deal with spray painting the jet. Once finished, the Strato Fortress is good to go. The Air Force plans to operate the B-52 through 2050, as they have been outfitted with up-to-date technology and are rigorously maintained. By that time, this iconic bomber will have clocked an entire century of service. In the quest for next-generation weaponry, the United States has been pushing the limits of speed and technology with hypersonic systems. Good boost. One of the most ambitious of these efforts is the X-51A Wave Rider. One left, one left. Okay. Okay, I got him now. I got him now. We're An experimental hypersonic okay. missile designed to travel at speeds greater than Mach 5, over 3,800 miles per hour. Developed by the U.S. Air Force, DARPA, Boeing, and Pratt and & Whitney Rocketdyne, the X-51 Wave Rider was created to demonstrate scramjet propulsion in sustained flight. Scramjets, or supersonic combustion ramjets, are air-breathing engines that compress incoming air at supersonic speeds, allowing for unmatched velocity and efficiency. On test days, the B-52 would carry the X-51 mounted beneath its wing and climb to high altitude. Once in position over the Pacific, the B-52 released the Wave Rider, which then ignited a solid rocket booster to accelerate it to supersonic speed. After booster separation, the X-51 scramjet engine kicked in, propelling the vehicle to hypersonic speeds. The significance of these tests goes far beyond speed. Hypersonic weapons could potentially strike targets anywhere on the globe in under an hour. Bypassing modern air defense systems due to their speed and unpredictable flight paths. Mastering scramjet technology is a critical step in that direction. While the X-51 program concluded in 2013, it provided invaluable data for future hypersonic designs. Today, the knowledge gained from the Wave Rider is being used to develop more advanced hypersonic systems across all branches of the U.S. military. The B-52 has served in every major U.S. conflict since Vietnam. However, it was primarily developed as a Cold War era threat deterrent. In the event of an international attack or emergency, B-52 squadrons located at bases around the world would spring into action, taking off with either conventional or nuclear payloads. While the Cold War itself is over, the threat of large-scale war is not. For that reason, Modern B-52 crews are still trained for rapid preparation and pre-flight checks, ensuring they can get up in the air as soon as possible. While the crews can be ready in a matter of minutes, the same can't be said for the aircraft. From cold, it can take between 30 and 45 minutes for a standard B-52. However, the U.S. Air Force has developed several solutions to this problem.
The latest is a new engine cover that can help prevent ice building and damage from extreme cold. The covers, which wrap around all of the engine components, are likely to be integral in preventing takeoff delays and reducing maintenance. For decades, the most effective method of getting a B-52 up in the air quickly is to use what's known as a cartridge warm-up or cart start. This process involves using solid propellant cartridges, which generate hot, high-pressure gases to spin the turbine and compressor sections of the engine. During the pre-flight process, the crew will give the signal to initiate the engine start sequence. At this point, an electrical charge ignites the cartridges, producing a sudden burst of hot gas and smoke. This causes the engines to roar to life. As a result, the B-52 can be in the air in as little as 10 to 15 minutes. With its 185-foot wingspan and a maximum takeoff weight of over 480,000 pounds, the B-52 is by no means a fast or maneuverable aircraft, especially on the ground. However, one of the unique features of the aircraft is its bicycle landing gear, which consists of four dual wheel pods that can all swivel independently. This allows the massive aircraft to make tighter turns than many other aircraft of its size. It also allows for a process called crabbing, in which the back or forward landing gear can make small adjustments to keep the aircraft moving in a straight line. Crabbing is also useful during landing, especially when crosswinds prevent the aircraft from making a straight approach to the runway. This process allows the pilot to keep the B-52's fuselage at an angle while its landing gear remains aligned with the runway. To bring the 240-ton behemoth to a complete stop, pilots employ drag chutes, which can be deployed from the tail section to reduce speed, ensuring a safe and controlled stop. The B-52 Stratofortress remains one of the most enduring and versatile aircraft in military history. Most B-52s flying today were built in the 1960s, making them over 60 years old, older than many of the crew members. From Cold War nuclear deterrence to modern hypersonic missile tests, it has consistently adapted to meet evolving mission needs. Thanks to continuous upgrades, like new engines, radar systems, and weapons integration, the B-52 is expected to fly well into the 2050s. This remarkable longevity is a testament to both its original design and the Air Force's commitment to modernization. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.